Hi, I'm Max. Hi, and I'm Denise. And welcome back to another edition of Urban Lifestyles. We've got a great show today. And before we get into that, where did the year go? I don't know. 2021 seemed as if it just got here and now it's gone. I can't believe it. We're already thinking about 2022. Mm -hmm. But before we go there, some of the things that we're going to be talking about in today's show is a piece that you did with MSD. Yes. You also did a piece with AARP. Yes. And we also visited a new restaurant in downtown Louisville. We'll take a quick break and back with more right after this. Hello, this is Bruce Bell with Keller Williams. I'll be joining you for the next few weeks to discuss the local real estate market and to give advice to those who own homes or are looking to buy homes in the future. In 2020, we had one of the craziest real estate markets of all time. What I mean by that is, there are more people looking to buy homes than there were homes available. This caused a shortage of inventory and drove up the price of the average home. The good news is the market has started to shift. And for the first time in months, there are now more houses available than there are people looking to buy. If you've been waiting on the sidelines for the perfect time to jump in the real estate market, now's the time. If you want more local real estate market updates or are looking to buy or sell a house in the future, please don't hesitate to give me a call. My number is 502-645-2039. Well, Denise, I know you did the first segment with AARP, so tell us about that. Well, we're approaching 2022, Okay. And we're talking about elections. A lot of times we don't know how our vote can make a difference and how can we even get our vote in, but AARP has some information, so let's just take a look. It is my pleasure to once again bring one of my favorite segments of Urban Lifestyles, and that's with AARP because there's always going to be vital information. Uh, today, I have the pleasure with a new guest that I've never interviewed before, and that is Miss Ruby Mason. And my also my other guest, special guest, as I say, is Mr. Scott. I'm not going to say Scott's last name. I'm going to let him do that because I never pronounce it correctly, but he knows it's all love coming from me. And Scott is your AARP Kentucky Associate State Director. So to both of you, welcome so much. And Ruby, ladies first, I'm going to start with you. Uh, basically, again, welcome. Tell us about how you got started volunteering in your community with AARP and with the Rotary Club. Okay, uh, my uh, volunteering, I just always feel if you live somewhere, you need to be familiar with it. And the only way to be familiar is to get involved. And I know with AARP, they've always been sensitive about senior citizen and being a senior citizen, I wanna know all there is to know to help me um, as I go through these aging years. And a Rotary is about service above self. Mm -hmm. And so that's me, I wanna be able to help. And I know they help international, locally. And as a member of the Rotary Club, we're always helping the children, the elderly, and anywhere there's a need, we're involved in it. Okay, well, Ruby, thank you. Um, I do have to ask this then. So how long have you been a poll worker and why is it important to you? Because today's segment is about having the education and knowledge when it comes to voting for upcoming 2022. I've been um, serving for 14 years wow. as a poll worker because I know uh, the county clerks are always in need of someone to help. They need responsible registered voters to do this work. And I feel I'm capable and I don't like to have to see things that need to be done mm -hmm. when I know that I'm capable of doing it. And so I try to bring others along because I know there's always that need. So I just want to be helpful. Oh, I appreciate that so much because I often wonder when you see all about the returns and the status and the things going on with voting, who are these people that are behind the scene or that greet you so lovely when you go in to vote? But Scott, and it's, long, it's I'm long hours too, 12 hours or more. <laughs> oh, wow. And thank you for your service. So I want to turn it over to Scott. Uh, can you tell us more about AARP's voter outreach and the plans for the 2022 elections? Denise, it's so good to be with both you and Ruby today. It's exciting to have you both. 
Um, real simply, AARP has for decades made certain that folks know where to go vote, mm -hmm. how to make a voting plan, and what's what's the priorities on the ballot, um, who is going to represent your issues. So AARP is a nonpartisan organization, and we don't endorse any candidates or make any contributions of any kind. But the bottom line for AARP is very simple. We want people to know that their voice is their uh, is their vote. Mm -hmm. So when you vote, you're exercising that important franchise that uh, so many people, you know, get confused and get lost. And the pandemic has made so many things different. So that's why in 2022, we're working with the Kentucky Secretary of State and the Board of Elections to make sure folks know where they can go vote, when they can go vote, and how to vote safely. Okay, because what made, come, came to mind, Scott, also was about during the pandemic and how it changed how we voted here in Kentucky and vote in Kentucky. Uh, and I know you say what you're working with some of the uh, sectors, such as secretary, because I wanted to know what else about educating voters, because it's a lot of stuff that we just don't know. There is. And, you know, now there's more, really more ways to vote than ever. Um, the changes that came from the 2021 General Assembly are going to be significant. Oh. There's absentee voting, there's early voting. There's different polling, like in uh, uh, Ruby's County, Jasmine County. Mm -hmm. um, there are nine voting locations, so you don't have to go just to your precinct. Um, you can request an absentee ballot. Um, and I think what our message is, is know where to go, when to go, make a voting plan and have a plan ready. Uh, for the May primaries in 2022. Is your registration current? Have you moved? Are you in the military? Those kind of issues. So that's what we really encourage folks to do, plan ahead. And also when you mentioned that, what came to mind is a lot of people know where to show up, but they don't show up equipped and ready to vote. They don't have this kind of ID or the wrong kind of ID. So is right. that information also included? It is. And one of the things that Ruby's working with us on is we uh, hosted a live telephone town hall that we took statewide with the Kentucky Secretary of State um, to try and get that information into people's hands. We're following up with some different advertisement and local newspapers, radio, etc. So we're really trying to get the word out. Think ahead to 2022 and be prepared. So does this, I know you're over the state, Scott. So does this mean I'm here in Jefferson, Ruby's in Jessamine, she's in Nicholasville. All these counties throughout Kentucky are pretty much following the same protocol and information? Yes, they are. Okay. Now I'm going to jump back to Ruby. So Ruby, <laughs> <laughs> tell us where viewers can go to get the updates that they need to make a voting plan for 2022. Okay, so AARP Kentucky has what voters need to know online. We just had a tele town hall with Secretary of State Michael Adams. It's on AARP Kentucky Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to give voters an up-to-date details about updates to Kentucky's voting process in 2022. So they can go to aarp.org mm -hmm. forward slash Kentucky votes. Oh. Well, you know, Denise, it's a great segment. And again, AARP always seems to have the pulse on things that are just really important mm -hmm. to us. And the thing about it is you want to make sure that your vote gets counted and registered. So a lot of people show up, but then they're not equipped. They don't have the right ID and things like that. So mm -hmm. check in with AARP. They tell you everything you need to know. So to make sure your vote goes. And your vote does count. Yes. We'll take another break and back with more right after this. Boyville is good. B96.5. Your man Nick Cannon is in the building and we taking over. We're going to be wilder every morning. About to have some fun, y'all. Let's go up. Press another move. Lock it in to the Nick Cannon Morning Show, 6 to 10 on B96.5 is more than just getting from one place to another. It's healthy, social, good for the environment, and anyone can do it. 
We at Middletown love cycling and really love helping others discover a new passion. Stop in today and let our friendly, knowledgeable staff help you get started. We cater to beginners as well as experienced cyclists. We're a local business that cares about our community because we are a part of the community. Come in today and get on a bicycle that fits your needs. And in Well, we got an opportunity to visit a new restaurant that is in downtown Louisville that will make an impact on your taste buds. So take a look at this. We're at the corner of Fifth and Chestnut at a new African-American owned restaurant, and it's also locally owned. And I'm here with the owner whose name I have screwed up so many times. It's William McCathern and his wife, Sharika, correct? First of all, welcome to Urban Lifestyle. Thank you. Thank you. So tell me how this all came about. Uh, well, I have a restaurant in Indianapolis. I've been open there for five years now. It's called Huge Impact Indianapolis, of course. And um, I just wanted to think of a way that I could be a blessing to others and bless their appetites. So I thought of the name Huge Impact, make you want to keep coming back for more. So how and why did you choose Louisville, Kentucky? My mother's side of the family, my father's side of the family, and I just want to bring something to them to enjoy because a lot of them aren't able to make it up to Indianapolis. So tell me a little bit about the menu and what people can expect when they visit. Well, uh, I consider the menu as like all-American exotic food. We have wings, lamb chops, ribeye steaks, fried green tomatoes. Uh, we have a little bit to choose from, so you can't come in here and not have anything that you desire. So tell me, what has the reception been by the community since you've been open? A lot of uh, our people come in and support us, and that really makes me feel good. Okay, now we know a lot has happened in Louisville over the last two years with Black Lives Matter, and we know that the downtown area was heavily impacted. So how do you think that's going to affect you going forward? Uh, actually, I think it would be uh, more of a blessing to me because uh, a lot of people, there is nothing here left, so I'm just trying to uplift people to come back downtown and support let's get this business rolling and let's just get it cracking and come out and support so when you're looking at your restaurant your restaurant what are your hours of operation uh we're, we're closed on mondays tuesday through friday we open 11 a.m to 9 p.m saturday 12 p.m to 9 p.m and then we open every first and third sunday where we do soul food and brunch and that's 12 p.m to 6 p.m so if I'm trying something on your menu because I already have, uh, but what's your signature item? What's your go-to? I like the Cajun Alfredo. That's one of my favorites. And it's uh, made from scratch, all homemade. And I notice you've got a lot of men in the kitchen that are doing the cooking, which is a little reverse there. So are you all dominating that space? Of course. <laughs> Of course. Right. So if someone wants to go visit your restaurant in Indy, where is that one located? Uh, it's 5110 West 38th Street. It's uh, right in between Georgetown and Moeller Road, about two miles from Lafayette Road. Okay. And what advice do you have for that African-American who wants to go into business and, and do what you're doing? Uh, be caring, be professional, have patience, and don't just do it for the money, do it for the love. So you've got, here's your opportunity to tell everybody why they should visit. Huge impact. Uh, well, first of all, you should visit because the food is great. Uh, we're black owned. We're bringing something new to the city that they don't have to offer. And uh, I would appreciate it. So that's more of all for you to come and support us. So William, we're going to follow you as you put together one of your signature meals. So what are you making? I'm making a Cajun Alfredo with chicken. Okay. And I'm just uh, starting off sauteing everything, saute my broccoli. So, how did you start cooking? What, when did you decide that that was your thing? Right about like nine years old. My dad used to have me, he cooked soup, so he used to have me in the kitchen with him all the time. And uh, I just wanted to take it a step further. So in 2011, I graduated from culinary art school. I went to the Chef's Academy in Indianapolis, and I have my associate's degree. I started working for a couple of people, and I feel like they didn't pay me what I was worth. So I took my last income tax check. Well, first I started selling food out of my house on Sundays and then it got big I started doing it every day so for me working I had like an income tax check it was about like 6500 so I bought my food truck and I was on my food truck for two years and after that it just took off and then I moved into my brick and mortar and here I am with my second location and never look back no sir that's not an option all right so so how long does it take to prepare this meal uh, about 10 minutes Cooking something from scratch, how do you get the same amount of ingredients every time? Because I know you don't measure. I mean, it's just about being consistent. I've been doing it so long, I'm prone to it. Uh -huh. So I don't, I don't know. I couldn't really tell you. But everything comes out the same, and the everybody same, has every the same experience. Yes, every time, every single time. 
still. So what are some of the things that we've put also? I know we started with the broccoli and then some other vegetables. You put mm -hmm. seasonings, and you've got the chicken in there and the heavy cream. What does the heavy cream do? It's, uh, it's the base for the Alfredo sauce. Okay. So you let it cook a little bit till it thickens up, and then it'll give it that nice creamy texture. Probably around like 12 ounces. key is to make sure everything is very hot before you, yes. as you add the different layers. Yes. So when you're incorporating it, you don't want to get it too, let the cream cook out too much because it'll separate from the butter and it get real oily. So you just have to watch it while you're cooking it. And it looks like it's just about done and you can tell because it's come to a complete boil and now you're ready to, right, the sauce is thickening up. And you can do this with chicken and what are the, some of the other uh, things that you add? Chicken, Philly steak, grilled salmon, or grilled shrimp. Right. And a lot of people double their meats up too. So you might get one with chicken and shrimp, salmon and shrimp, steak and shrimp, okay. double chicken, chicken and salmon. And the great thing about your restaurant, everything can be made to order. Yes, of course. So you put the Parmesan cheese on there. A bit of uh, Montreal seasoning. Now, what f flavoring does the Montreal offer? Uh, it's like a chicken flavor. Okay. Just to broaden up the, uh, like the chicken, if you get chicken, the uh, chicken alfredo. It definitely looks great, definitely appetizing, and also visually appealing as well. Thank so, you. uh, you've done a great job. Thank you. Appreciate that. Can't wait to taste. All right. <laughs> well, didn't it, to me, the food was excellent. What, what are your thoughts? It was. It hit all the cylinders, mm -hmm. all my taste buds, all the points, and the reviews are great. And when you like good food, here's another place that you need to go. Right. And support locally owned businesses. Yes. And, again, they're doing some great things to try to really regenerate and bring people mm -hmm. back to downtown. We'll take another break and back with more right after this. I'm Camille Fort. I'm a legal administrative assistant here at the water company and I've been here for five years. Well, I chose a career here by chance. Um, I actually started as a temporary worker, but the reason that I stayed became pretty clear quickly. Um, I was offered a lot of opportunities for advancement and that really made a big impact on me and I decided to stay and really um, take advantage of the things that were offered to me. It feels really good to be a part of the makeup um, of part of the city of Louisville in response, of course, to the pandemic, being able to help customers, being a part of a program called Drops of Kindness, where we were able to help uh, customers with their water bills during the pandemic. You really get to see how water is an essential thing and it touches everyone's lives. And you walk away feeling really good that you were able to help someone. I am excited about the possibility of getting back to the office. I believe everyone is. It's been over a year and a half being away from the office and I know the executive leadership team here is really working to make sure that everyone has a great time when they come back into the office and really get that camaraderie back. Something I do outside of Louisville Water to relax, I love to work out, I love to exercise. So. I'm part of a CrossFit gym and that's something that I like to do. I love to strength train and weight lift. If someone wanted to work at Louisville Water Company, I would definitely tell them to take advantage of the opportunity. They offer great benefits, competitive pay, and many opportunities for advancement. So 
Denise, you got an opportunity to go out and talk to our people over at MSD. So what's going on with them? Well, MSD is always involved. They serve the community, Mm -hmm. but they also go further in serving the community in ways that it benefits all ages and all spectrums from jobs to education. In this segment, we're going to talk about education. So let's just take a look. So it's time for another segment with MSD. We want to feature all the benefits that MSD does in the community as well as in our own homes. I'm here with Ms. Sharice Horn. And Sharice, welcome again to Urban Lifestyle. Good to see you again. Tell us again for the viewing audience to know what your role is here at MSD and what that means. Sure, I am Director of Community Benefits and Partnerships, and what that means, a lot of things, to be quite honest with you. Uh, We have a a new initiative called Community Benefits Program. So with that program, we ensure that our contractors and firms who are working with us uh, provide a leave behind with the projects that they do. So that looks like, you know, a financial donation, it could be volunteer hours, it could be in-kind support to nonprofits and schools within our service area. So I know today we're going to talk about a partnership that involves schools, so share some information on that. Again, our initiative is fairly new. Mm -hmm. The Community Benefits Program started in 2019. In 2020, um, we started working with JCPS schools, and since that time, our firms have committed to over $450,000 to JCPS. So that is amazing uh, commitments hitting our school systems. And what that looks like, it comes in various forms. It could be supporting a school who needs Apple pens. It could be supporting a school who needs a new STEM lab or playgrounds or um, our recent uh, uh, initiative was uh, greenhouse and rain gardens and uh, hyperponic beds, I should say. So then with the partnership with the contractors and the firms and with MSD and you all partnering and having some skin in the game per se, Uh, In this case, they picked which school and who determined the type of project, because you mentioned the greenhouse? Yes. So this particular project, the um, firm uh, selected Fairdale because they were working in the vicinity of that school. So with that project, um, they met with the principal there and uh, tried to understand what their needs were. And the uh, principal wanted to really focus around STEM water, uh, environmental. So the principal came up with ideas on how that could be done, submitted that to our engineering firm. Our engineering firm uh, uh, requested or selected that, I should say, and they wrote them a check. So that check yesterday was really about goodwill and what that looks like with the impact that they received or with the commitments they received. Wow, I I love that, especially speaking of STEM program type uh, courses. Now what would be the age groups do you know for these kids who are participating in this and learning? This particular project is it's for elementary school but our oh absolutely you got to reach them young. You got to reach them young because everyone doesn't have the same access right okay. or the same opportunities. So we are big about getting into K, uh, K through fifth grade. Um, making sure that they understand what water is, the value of water, and how there are opportunities uh, for them to grow into different uh, career paths. Um, so we, we work with, and our contractors work with um, elementary, po- you know, post-secondary, secondary, um, all type of, of individuals in our community. Um, the greenhouse, how did that shape up, and what is their participation and what it looks like? Because my mind is going all over the place. So. It was my first time seeing their, 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 uh, their commitment. It was great just to see and, and hear from the uh, youth at that school on um, the opportunities that were available to them, how it was important for them to grow their own food, sourcing their own plants, um, growing from, from seed. It, it was amazing just to see how our kids can relate if you give them the opportunity to do so. So it, it was amazing to see. I would say that's a great opportunity and a good learning lesson and definitely something that I could benefit from as well. So usually these projects would take how long? The actual project itself can can vary. Um, It can vary from a three month project to a a five year project depending on how large our projects are. Mm -hmm. So that determines kind of what the contractor or firm commits and how they commit. So if they want, you know, a short term win, they may work with a, a school or nonprofit um, to provide uh, 
um, some other type of exposure. For instance, mentor-mentee relationships or workforce, helping individuals to uh, update their resumes. Yeah, so that can look at, that can look all kind of ways, and we always know that um, the community needs whatever support we can provide, right? So just making sure that we're able to give back. I love this. I would have to hopefully get out there to see this project. I know sometimes we do shoot on a location where something we didn't have the opportunity to do today, but I definitely want to see it. But again, MSD, you all are partnering in the the community, benefiting from jobs to students to learn it. It's you all are on the full throttle of it all. That's what I could say, hitting on all cylinders. Absolutely. And we always say together the community benefits, right? So when we work together and live together the community benefits. Well, again, MSD continues to do what they do, just being a vital piece in our community. Mm -hmm. And they make sure that when they bring on board the vendors, mm -hmm. that everybody has to have skin in the game to help people and to benefit here in the community. But what got me was this uh, project and about STEM courses. Okay. And I'm thinking middle school to high, and these are elementary age oh, wow. students right. learning about the processes of the greenhouse and the uh, benefit of water and all right. that. Things that we never would have thought about when we were kids coming exactly, up. Exactly, but oh. made possible with partnership through MSD. We'll take another break and back with more. At lg and &E KU, we're always working hard to make your life a little easier because we know you've got your hands full. Our new mobile app gives you the power to check your account balance, review your payment history, and effortlessly pay your bill from anywhere while making it easier than ever to report and track power outages. Download the app today to get the convenience of LG and E and KU at your fingertips. COVID-19 is responsible for over 700,000 deaths in the U.S., and that number continues to rise. 9,000 of those deaths were in Kentucky, but we can make a difference by taking the shot. If you don't want to do it for yourself, do it for someone you love. We will never be able to get back to normal until we all do our part, so let's all get vaccinated. So wear your mask, wash your hands, roll up your sleeves, and take the shot. And the holidays are the times for families to get together. So please, take, take the, the shot. shot. Hello, this is Bruce Bell with Keller Williams. I'll be joining you for the next few weeks to discuss the local real estate market and to give advice to those who own homes or are looking to buy homes in the future. In 2020, we had one of the craziest real estate markets of all time. What I mean by that is there are more people looking to buy homes than there were homes available. This caused a shortage of inventory and drove up the price of the average home. The good news is the market has started to shift, and for the first time in months, there are now more houses available than there are people looking to buy. If you've been waiting on the sidelines for the perfect time to jump in the real estate market, now's the time. If you want more local real estate market updates or are looking to buy or sell a house in the future, please don't hesitate to give me a call. My number is 502-645-2039. Well, for the holidays, we're always looking for great stocking stuffers. And here at Middletown Cycling, they've got some great ideas for you. Don't you agree? Yes, I do. So let's take a look at this. Well, we're back again at Middle of Town Cycling, which is at Bardstown Road of Waterson Expressway, right behind Sullivan's Bakery. And I'm here with Nira. And Nira, first of all, happy holidays. Happy holidays. Good to have you. Right. Well, thanks for having us. And one thing that we're talking about today are stocking stuffers. And there are some great ideas that you can pick up right here at Middle of Town Cycling. So, Nira, I'm going to let you start by showing us some of the options that we have available. So basically stocking stuffers, okay. you know, things that most bicyclists will need in order to ride their bikes and then maintain their, maintain their bikes. So we have this here, it's like a little value pack, comes with the bike wash, a foaming degreaser, and some lube. And it's like a little like a value pack for $39.99. So that's a great little thing to give the bicycle enthusiasts. And, and, and how often should you foam, lube, and degrease your bike? You you want to at least clean your bike every time it gets fairly dirty. Okay. Um, you don't want to leave the dirt on there, otherwise those kind of eat into parts and stuff. So every time you wash your bike, you want to then make sure you lube your chain and uh, make sure it's properly greased. Right, good idea. So let's walk this way. So now I'm seeing this cute gadget here. And I'm like, damn, what was that? Let me, let me take my hand off. All right. So when you talk about it, then I'll pick it up. All right. So Nira, tell us about the Cyclone. 
So it's a cool little gadget here. This, it helps with cleaning your chain. So you open this little flap up, put your chain in here, add either a cleaner of your choice. I, we usually put Dawn, uh, a little bit of soap, or it comes with a specific park tool cleaner. You can use that as, that as well. And then you just kind of run your chain through it. And it has little small little brushes that go in between the chain links and the rollers and cleans it up and makes it pretty pretty clean. That's pretty cool. And you do this while the chain is still on your bike. Yes, you keep it on your bike. You don't have to remove it. You don't have to open it up. You just put it in there, flip this uh, little cover on it, and you're good to go. Great. Right. And yeah. then I see here. I like it too. <laughs> so this one is called the Oi Bell. And uh, this particular item is good when you want somebody to get out of your way, but you want to be nice to them and not rude. Right. And you really should be. <laughs> and next, of course, is gear. And you can have never have too much swag, correct? Absolutely. And we would want you to wear our swag and our merchandise. <laughs> so we have our cool little baseball cap. We have our uh, bottle cages. We have our jerseys and uh, cycling apparel. So come get some and give it to your uh, bike enthusiast right. in your house. And the last thing, this is when you really want to bling out, and these are water bottle holders. Yes, they're very cool, you know, add a little color to your bike, add a little bling to your bike, and uh, they're lightweight, they're fun, cool design, and holds any kind of uh, water bottle that you use for your uh, biking. Well, you know what, I'm ready for the holidays, how about you? I am too. Yeah, well, you know, I think that's our show. And that's our time. And we'll see you back here next time on Urban Lifestyles, and stay safe and take the shot. And happy holidays and coming up on a happy new year. That's right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.